What's up guys? Welcome back to the Turbo John YouTube channel. Had a great weekend of racing. We were in Rockingham. We had a blast. I got me a personal best in the quarter mile. That was not expected, but it was fun. And we had a good time. We made it about 30, probably about 25, 30 minutes away from the track. And Brian calls me and said his trailer lights were out, so we needed to stop. We stopped, hopped out of the truck. As soon as I hopped out of the truck, I smelled something burning. I assumed it was his something electrical. I walked around to the side of my trailer and that is not what it was. I had two wheel bearings going out on one side of the trailer. So it's always fun when you're doing that. So it turned out it ended up being a super long, super, super long night. I had enough parts and pieces to fix one of the wheel bearings. So that was always fun. So we got one, we limped it three wheeled, three legged all the way back to the shop, about 50, 55 miles an hour. This is the way we limped it back. It was a little overloaded, wouldn't you say, Brian? Uh, it was a long ride back at 50 to 55 miles per hour, but it is what it is. We made it back, that's all that matters. Uh, I had to, both of these wheels, this is the one that was actually smoking, the front one, and when I jacked it up, both of them were loose and the bearings were beat out. I had one set of bearings, so now, I'm about to replace all four and I'm gonna have two spares for everything. So, yay. So let's get started. I ain't gonna show y'all this. Y'all seen me replace wheel bearings several times now in several different videos, but just know that I'm doing all four this time. And if I break down beside it again, I'm gonna have enough to do all of them, period. All right, we're gonna work on Randy's car. That's what y'all gonna see next. Okay guys, just a little bit of footage on the trailer. I'm down to number three here, but I want to show you something. Me and Ryan. Not me and Ryan. <laughs> you. He's blaming you. it on, you blaming it on you. me? You. I'm an idiot, guys. So I have been having trailer problems and bearing problems ever since I had this trailer. It's like constantly killing bearings, right? And so I was constantly pulling them apart, putting them together. And all this time, I was utilizing the lock washer that... I was using it improper. Let me just say that. Let me show you what so happened. Every time I have replaced bearings, they have never come with the proper washer. They always come with a cotter key. They always come with a, a nut. Actually, they didn't even come with a nut. I was reusing my nuts. But anyway, I went to the tractor supply place. I went out your supply today, and I got some of these. This is the actual thing. So what happens, this thing, this is a nut. If you look on the bottom, you see this is a like a D shape. So this would go on there and the nut would go around it. And so I automatically assume when you look at this, it looks like it's just like a lock nut and that's not proper. The proper thing is this goes on like this and it goes on very simple, very easy. And then you tighten it down. And since there's no hole for a cotter key. Very simple, you see down here, this is down here. It's locked in with the D shape. The nut starts and then it just goes on and look. So the old ones I had to I had to put force on it from there because of the way this was done. But so me and Ryan were moseying along, minding our own business, tightening this bad boy up. And then it occurred, I said, as we were tightening, I said, Ryan said, well, how does that thing tighten up and stay on? I said, well, it's just a lock nut. He said, well, it doesn't seem to be very effective. Why are you still tightening it? And I said, well, what are you talking about? It's tightening and you torque it down to about 30 to 40 foot pounds. And then we come up with the solution. If you look down here at the bottom, are you kidding me? You bend that tang down and it goes into the castle nut. I'm a freaking idiot, idiot. So hopefully I'll have no more trailer bearing problems. Okay, so I'm back under the car again. Uh, Rockingham, it separated a lot. It was a lot of a and squat. It looked like it was pretty high. It was, I think it might be too violent and the front end's not maybe staying up enough. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some more changes. Key, key lesson here, guys, you gotta make changes. You know, don't be afraid to move it, move it back. This tire out, you see that C-clip eliminator is leaking. So I gotta pull this thing out and uh, sometime before this weekend and uh, reseal that C-clip eliminator because it's getting a little bit of oil. So that's not good. But anyway, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move that lower bar down. I'm not going to go all the way down to where it was. I got to do some calculations real fast. And then we're going to decide where we're going to move it. 
because that's what's going to have to happen. That now is pretty high in I squat, so I'm going to just move that upper bar back up one hole. That seemed to work really good, or I may leave it where it's at. I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. I need to slow down, look at the video from Darlington, and then look at the video, slow, slow down side by side with Rockingham and see how it was separating and planting. So um, we got some work to do. Up, buddy? I was getting a good look. Look up. See, look, trim. Smile to the camera. Wink. Smile. <laughs> so Randy's been in here working on his for a little bit. See, we've got nice header studs now. So that's awesome. So we're fixing to slide the headers on it, and then we're going to try to mount the oil pump over here somewhere. So that is our progress that we're trying to make tonight. So we can go ahead and get a belt ordered. Summit sent us uh, some wrong parts. Um, we were supposed to get two three inch U bins, and we got two one and a half inch U bins. Uh, they just got misboxed somehow. So somebody's got ours, and we got somebody else's. So hopefully uh, they're not as mad as we are, which we're not very upset because we still got a long ways to go. All right, check it out. We got one header on fine. This other header over here is not cooperating. It's hitting the K member down here. So we're gonna have to take the bolts loose out of the motor plate and the engine plate, pick the motor up to the side a little bit so we can slide that header on. Gonna be a pain in the butt, but it is what it is. That's the only way we can get it in there. So we're gonna do that later. Brian just welded this uh, crossbar mount in the front. So this is where the oil pump is gonna be mounted. I uh, didn't really like it being so far over here, so I come up with the idea to put another crossbar in it. That crossbar may also be used to mount the turbo, but just got to go one step at a time, see exactly how everything lays out. So we know this header is good. We'll get the oil pump mounted up, get the belt ordered, then get the other header on it, and then Brian's going to do the kit. And basically, it's going to probably just come out of 90 here and then come over and then come up somewhere in the middle. Randy's still trying to decide if he's going to do completely low mount, front mount, or kind of kick it sideways. It's really not going to matter. He, lo he loves the way they look sticking out the front, but that'll be kind of low where the, where the blower was. So I don't know. But, I mean, from what we have seen from our experiences, uh, going front mount is not necessary. It just looks cool. I wish I'd have never went front mount on mine. Okay, so the pump is mounted. Brian got the pump mounted and welded. This is just, we don't have it completely supported yet. He's going to, I think he said he's gonna come off of this bottom bracket and then go up to the bottom of the fuel pump up here too. And then there'll be a big support up here. So that is where the home is for the fuel pump and the oil pump. Good job, Brian. That looks good. That looks awesome. That's gonna uh, be compact. We can still use his fuel cell, the big fuel cell that was over here, like 18 gallons worth of fuel. I think that's what it was. Class, it was it was very big <laughs> it's a lot of fuel um but yeah that's this coming along man the thing that sucks is having to get that header on over there that's gonna be a pain in the butt to do every time but it is what it is those individual flanges they moved around a little bit that side over there didn't move as much apparently as that side because that side went right on and that one side's not so it moved around a little bit and it's hitting the k member with the studs and we put the studs in it to make it easier to go on but what we're going to do fix it that's right it's getting closer probably in the next couple weeks uh so now his next step um what are you doing next you, you waiting on the flange randy ordered the flange who'd you order the flange from street car fabrications street car fabrications nice guy over there nice billet flange one of the little stubbies and it's got the little weld on addition for the for the mount so those two, Brian and Randy, are going to have to get together and figure out where they want the turbo. What's going to be the easiest? And I mean, like, <laughs> so Randy's not going to be involved in the decision making. <laughs> Which has, I mean, it. Does, I swear, it just got to go. That's right. It's got to go where it's going to go. And you know, it's it's fine. Yeah. I, I wish I wouldn't have ever put mine forward facing. It just creates a whole bunch of hassle, but 
it does look good forward facing, but I mean, where your hole was for the blower, I mean, it's like down there on the ground. Mm -hmm. So we'll see, but this is gonna work out good. And we can clock this pump, the fuel pump, we can clock it a little bit if we want to. So we may do that. We've got plenty of ground clearance between the, uh, the ground, plenty of ground clearance between the ground and the pump. So I think that's gonna be good. All right, guys, will y'all comment, like, and subscribe. Go buy some t-shirts, get some merch, join the members only section. We'll be doing a lives on there once a week, trying to talk about some tech stuff. All right, y'all go fast and get some wind lights. We're going racing this weekend.